Welcome back. We'll get straight into it today. The law of cause and effect. Now, most people will probably just think of Newton, Isaac Newton's third law, action and reaction, uh, which states that for every action or force, uh, there is an equal and opposite reaction. And he basically noticed this in nature and he understands that, you know, what's going on here. So how, how do we implement this? We're going to talk today about a little bit about the law. We're also going to talk about, discuss how we can think about it in different ways, how we can use it to our own advantage and how to understand why we may not be where we want to be. So this law is a universal law and it basically states that obviously, uh, well, <laughs> maybe not so obviously, uh, nothing happens by chance or outside of this universal law. Every action that you take, every action that is taken, every action, everything that happens has a reaction or consequence. Essentially, you reap what you sow. So you do bad shit, and then what, do you, what are you going to do? You're probably going to get bad shit, right? So if you're constantly robbing people and doing crap, basically, you might, you know, you probably are likely to receive crap. If you're doing good and you're giving and you're helping other people, uh, you are likely to receive help and good and, and you know, other stuff from other people. Um, and like I said, Isaac Newton basically noticed this, uh, understanding that essentially, and part of his other laws are that, you know, an object will remain uh, at rest or in motion until another force comes, I probably miss... Uh, misremembered that slightly um, but in that law again you can see that look for example if you have a toy car you push the toy car you've done the action the reaction is that the toy car moves and that's a very basic level of it that something happens something you do something something else happens everything you do something else happens so everything you do has a reaction or consequence and by understanding this law of cause and effect we can also learn from our actions so for example if we have done something that has had a negative consequence we can reflect on that and make sure that we don't take those same actions again and don't have those same no negative consequences and similarly if you do something that has a positive reaction or a positive outcome then you can learn from it and continue to keep doing those actions that provide the positive things now, obviously, well, again, obviously, but not so obvious to a lot of people, is that realistically, when you really look into things, things are no, they're not really positive and they're not really negative. They are neutral, and it is your opinion of that that makes that positive or negative. Um, I have said this story before, and I think that it would be worth saying it again, just as a slight tangent, to understand that things are not always as they seem. And they may be good or bad now, or they may be bad or good in the future. So, uh, this is a story about, a, I think it's a Chinese story about a farmer. Uh, so, one day there was a farmer and his horse ran away. And all the neighbours came round and they said, oh my god, your horse has run away. What are you going to do? Isn't that so terrible? Isn't it so terrible? And he said, maybe. The next day, the horse came back. And it brought with it seven wild horses. All the neighbours came round. Oh my God, isn't that lucky? Isn't that amazing? Now you've got seven extra horses. Uh, and the farmer said, maybe. The day after that, um, his son was trying to break in one of the horses. Um, and, you know, essentially make it, make it um, so the horse is used to someone riding it. Um, as it was a wild horse. Um, he get, unfortunately gets thrown and breaks his leg. All the neighbours come round. Isn't that so terrible? Oh my God, he's broken his leg. He's broken his leg. Um, and the farmer says, maybe. And then, uh, the day after that, the army officers come round. And uh, they're gathering young men to go in the army and fight in, in the current war. And they reject his son because he has broken leg. And of course, all the neighbours come round and they say, oh my God, oh my God, isn't that amazing? Your son got out. And the farmer said, of course, maybe. 
And what you see from this story is that something today that looks positive may be negative tomorrow, and something that today looks negative may be positive tomorrow. So, anyway, going back, the law of cause and effect. So you can also reverse engineer this. You can work backwards. For example, I want a six pack. So that's the effect. So what cause or action do I need to take to, to achieve or attain that reaction or consequence or essentially the effect? So I want a six pack. The action is probably going to be do a load of exercise and eat well and what all mixture of things. Yeah. So you can work backwards. I want this. What actions need to be put in? And what you're getting here is in you, what you're getting into now is intentional planning and action. Most people just exist. They just exist. You know, they don't know most of them. They, you ask them why they do what they do. They probably wouldn't even be able to answer it. Um, you don't. There's a question that is hard to answer until you've asked it a few times. Why you do what you do? Some people might be able to answer it, but it's a, it's a, you know, a lot of people will come up with an answer that basically says, "I do what I do so I can continue doing what I do," which is a bit strange, isn't it? Um, so most people just exist. Do you just exist, or are you here intentionally? Are you intentionally taking action and reaping the seeds that you sow? Uh, what seeds are you actually sowing and what seeds are you reaping? Are you, um, you know, I, I encourage people to lead a, a, a clean, honest, moral life. Um, I think that is the way forward, really. You have to be, what you realise is that, you know, you can look, you can look out there and you can say, um, when you understand this law, you can look out there and you can say, okay, everything out there, there's a reason why that has been produced in that way. There's a reason why the effect is that way. And that is because of the cause, because of the actions that have produced the consequences. Now, a lot of people, you would go and see Mr. Lambo over there, yeah? And in most circumstances, you don't realise that that is the effect. What is the cause? You just say, isn't it lucky for him? It's okay for him because. It's okay for her because. It's okay for you because. And that you know that mindset needs to be eradicated from from you you need to eradicate that man mindset and realize that you can do anything that anyone else can do because we're all human at the end of the day yes you can become as good a boxer as muhammad ali or mike tyson if you really put in that effort and you really want to do it you can do it you can do anything but not everything so you see Mr. Lambo, and most people think, oh, it's, it's all right for him. Isn't he lucky? What a rich snob and all this shit. Um, but what you don't realize is the hours that actually went into that, the cause, the action that was required to then have the Lamborghini or whatever it may be, the six pack, being able to squat 200 kg, being able to squat 100 kg 100 times or whatever it, you know, whatever it may be. Building a house, owning property, owning because in the UK a lot of people are like, oh, we can't, we can never buy a property, we can never buy a property. Well, you're around all the people that, that are telling you that you can never buy a property, so of course you would never be able to buy a property if you're around all the people that are telling you that you can't buy a property. Because to those sorts of people, it's just inconceivable <clears throat> to do something like that. Just like for me, it's inconceivable for me to walk out of my house right now and uh, pass someone on the street and just kill them right there and then. It's inconceivable. That's something that would never cross my mind to do. But if I was in the wrong sort of groups, the, you know, crimes and murderers and criminals and stuff like that, it's probably something that is, um, you know, uh, you know, it's something that could be con conceived that you would do that. Uh, and in the same way, you need to get yourself into circles where these not normal things quote unquote not normal things are becoming normal like making a lot of money like you know having the freedom to travel as at the same time as making money like not potentially not having to work a nine to five or potentially not having to work until you retire potentially having an earlier retirement potentially living below your means and all this sort of stuff 
Um, so you've got to intentionally plan and take those actions to find what the effect is. Um, you know, you work backwards. Now, you don't have to do this. You can just exist. But I probably, well, I assume that if you're listening to a podcast like this, that you're not here to exist. You're here to thrive. You're here to thrive, not to survive. And the reality of that is that you are going to have to be willing to do what most won't to get what most don't. Because you can see, you know, most people don't have a 100k back cash in the bank. Most people don't have a million pound net worth, whatever it may be. Most people don't have a six pack. Most people don't have uh, financial independence. Most people don't have two, three, four, five cars. Most people don't have, you know, multiple skills. Um, most people don't know how to, you know, have qualifications in multiple different industries, for example. Most people don't have their own business. Most people don't have, and I could keep going in on and on and on again and again and again, but the reality there is that you just basically, those people that have what most people don't have, have done what most people won't do or what most people won't do consistently. Because it's very easy to go to the gym once and do one workout. But it's a different story to do a workout every single day. And it was interesting, actually, because I went on holiday, a little bit of a work holiday sort of thing. Well, it was holiday with friends. It was like a two-part holiday. The first part was with a massive group of friends, and the second part was with a smaller group of friends. And um, it was just in, you know, in the UK where I live, and it was just, you know, we drive for a few hours, a bit more than a few hours, and we stay on some Airbnbs and stuff. Um, but during the second part of the hot well, during the entire holiday, every single day, no matter what time I woke up, I did my exercise in the morning and my normal morning routine. Uh, and then on the second part of the holiday, I worked pretty much every single morning for two, three hours. Uh, while the sun was you know, shining outside, people are going to the beach and stuff. And you think, how can I get to a life if this is what you want, how can I get to a life where I could probably work two, three hours a day and chill the rest of the time, go to the beach, do surfing, whatever. Um, now, okay, obviously after a certain amount of time, you might get bored with that. But let's say that's the goal. That's the effect. So how are we going to work backwards to get to that point in time? Well, how much do you need to survive? Say it's 20 grand a year or 24 grand a year, two grand a month. Um, easy public maths and you think okay so to do that and work two hours a day five days a week say or four days a week three hours four days a week whatever the maths is how much do I have to make every single hour okay what industries can I do that in what industries could I could it be flexible now it's not going to happen overnight you have to put in that consistent action you have to be willing to do the consistent action that most people are not willing to do to get what most people do not have. And most people do not have that sort of freedom. And you can, you, you know, in that moment, I sat there and I thought, you know what, this is definitely doable. Um, you know, if I really wanted to go for that, it would require a bit more planning. And then I will have to work towards that sort of thing for a certain amount of time, perhaps a year, maybe more. Um, perhaps at least a year sorry perhaps a, you know a few years and then you get to that point where you say okay I've got enough money from these small amount of hours that I do not need to work nine to five anymore everything comes down really to cause and effect why am I overweight because I've been eating too much crap uh, you know why don't, I have, why don't I have enough money in my retirement? Because I never planned for the retirement. Uh, why am I tired today? Because I didn't sleep well last night. Why didn't I sleep well last night? Because I ate just before I went to sleep. I slept late. I was on the TV. I was watching TV. 
I was drinking alcohol, whatever it may be. You know, I was at the club, um, this and that. So the law of cause and effect. Every action has a reaction or consequence. Every action has a reaction or consequence. And I'll remind you and I'll leave you with Newton's third law, action and reactions. And this law states that for every action or force, there is a equal and option. Um, and there is an equal and opposite reaction. And as well as it is in nature, it is in you and me and the world that we see around us inside and out. Thank you, and I'll see you on the next episode.